Welcome, take it up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Kanika Atri, who's the Senior Director of Strategic Marketing at Juniper Networks. Hi, how are you, Kanika? Awesome, thank you for having me, Jessica. I'm excited to talk about the tech industry trends, and one of the big ones is actually the 5G that's coming, or actually some of it is here already. I want to get your take on it. What are some of the exciting opportunities here? Thank you. Uh, 5G, absolutely the next big thing for the next decade. Uh, not just for service providers, but for the entire networking industry and the telecommunications industry. Um, let me just talk a little bit about, you know, what are the big uh, game-changing aspects of 5G. Uh, we already know, you know, how 4G has changed our lives on the mobile phone, right? Today, how we download movies and watch content on the go. Uh, with 5G, we're gonna be able to deliver gigabits of speeds to that phone. So today on a typical movie, like a 700 MB you know, movie would mm -hmm. take a couple of minutes to download. With 5G, you can do that in a couple of seconds. So massive, massive capacity while you're on the move. Wow. That's one of the big things that 5G brings. And the second big thing is the latency. What is latency? It's basically the experience, like when you click on a link, the amount of time it takes to go and come back, you can feel the lag, right? Yes, you can see it spinning as you're waiting for that page to load. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today, that time on mobile networks is anything between 20 to 40 milliseconds, so you can feel it. Mm -hmm. But with 5G, we're talking about an under five millisecond latency, which is basically imperceptible. You won't even know you know, when you pinged and the response came back. Mm -hmm. So with such a high response ability of the network, I mean, it's the possibilities of what you can do is just tremendous. The third big thing that you know, 5G brings is the number of devices that it can connect to. So today, you know, when you're on a 4G network, the network is kind of limited as to how many endpoints that it can, you know, connect for each at, user. Right. For each mm -hmm. user, right? So as the number of user or the endpoints go up, the amount of bandwidth coming to each and every kind of reduces. Mm -hmm. With 5G, you know, we have to keep in mind that this world of connected things is happening, right? So in the future, you know, this mug could be a smart mug. My jacket could be a smart That's jacket. Right. Yes. A lot more IoT devices. Lo nice. Everything is going to be connected. Mm -hmm. Now, is it ready? Is the network ready to handle so many different kinds of connections? Mm -hmm. With 5G, that's now possible. So in a given certain, you know, meter square of area, you could now connect millions of devices. And imagine what that can do for industries. So with these three big capabilities, the kind of... Uh, applications possible are just, you know, are, are, are immense. Right. Let's take some of the exciting applications. Let's talk about, say, healthcare, for example. Mm -hmm. What can doctors and nurses do that they, they might not be able to do as much now? Yeah, what a great uh, example. Healthcare is actually one of the leading industry verticals for 5G use cases. Mm -hmm. Think about a connected ambulance, right? If there's a, you know somebody who, who needs an ambulance service, as he's moving into the ambulance, the doctor is able to stream right in mm -hmm. and look at what's going ha happening in real time. And again, this is you know high def video, mm -hmm. um, even possible to render this you know with augmented reality. So all the other statistics and his previous history is now, you know, available to the doctor while the patient is on the move. Mm -hmm. And he could even, you know, probably even have mixed reality kind of environment inside a van where, you know, he could take even a deeper look uh, in into the insides of the body. Wow. And even by the time the patient is at the hospital, everything is ready to go. Yes. So this is really saving lives. Yes. Another, another great example in the healthcare is robotic surgery. You know, there are many, many areas uh, in the world where it is not possible for doctors to be present. Yes. So with such a low latency of a network, the doctors could have uh, robotic surgery mm -hmm. done remotely, you know, millions of miles away to patients who need it at that time. So this is really also about democratizing healthcare. 
And in the industrial 4.0, let's talk about the manufacturing side. Uh, I know that the 5G is meant for the outdoor more than the indoor, but the, the, the 5G can do so much for a factory that's trying to be automated, right? Exactly, you know. Uh, with the industrial automation and industry 4.0, uh, we with 5G, we'll be able to actually track even the smallest chip, you know, Sometimes those are like barely visible even to the naked eye. Mm. But now with 5G, you can have beam forming, meaning, you know, this radio access point is, is sending millions of beams into these little chips that are moving across the factory floor, whatever little components there are, and be able to track it in real time, create that visibility mm. of the whole production line. By doing so, create far more efficiency far greater productivity, you know, right. faster lead times, much better quality. And the best part is the automation, right? Because of this latency, let's say if a chip is about to fall off this production line, you could have a robot immediately grab it, mm. you know, in a matter of milliseconds, because now the network has informed the robot that, hey, this chip is about to fall off. And it's able to remotely control that action to prevent the waste, yeah. Absolutely, mm. to, to bring it back. Mm. So I Industry 4.0 is pretty much, you know, uh, fueled by this 5G technology. Mm. And, um, and of course, uh, it, there is a mix of use cases for Wi-Fi 6 as well. So some use cases that don't require extreme latency that can be done with Wi-Fi 6. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, 5G and Wi-Fi 6 are a great complement in the indoor environment. And for the entertainment industry, I can just imagine lining up at Disney, uh, waiting for my turn to get on the roller coaster ride and have some kind of augmented reality gaming that's happening. So I can entertain myself while I'm waiting in line. Wouldn't that be fabulous? It's <laughs> not that far from now. It's going to happen very soon. And, you know, uh, Disney is one of the great examples, you know, who's really stepping it up on what 5G can bring mm -hmm. to the experiences. I mean, we all know about AR and VR and how that changes you know, the interaction uh, with the physical world. But uh, they're also thinking about things like mixed reality. And what is that? So mixed reality is a step uh, above AR and VR. AR is basically where you have a certain reality and you augment that reality with additional information. Mm -hmm. So for example, with these glasses, you know, when you're walking, it tells you, okay, on the aisle, you know, here's what the review of that product is, right? Okay. So that's augmenting the information. Okay. Virtual reality is you're actually creating a completely new virtual scene around you. Mm -hmm. Mixed reality is a combination of both of these, wherein you have a vis physical world, and to, to that you can add virtual objects. You can augment the information around this, but the coolest part with mixed reality is you can collaborate and manipulate this environment. So think about an application where, you know, five architects are trying to design a building. Yes. So they could actually just project that building, you know, prototype, that's a virtual projection, and they could like move things together, collaborate together to create a design, you know, and, and that, you could do that in, you know, two hours probably, wow. in, in much lesser time than maybe the months that it takes today, or interior designing. Entertainment is, of course, a great example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How tourism and how these virtual tours uh, in home or actually at a particular site, you know, uh, when you're taking these tours, you can have a completely different experience. Maybe you can sit in that royal chair even, you know, it, like a Game of Thrones chair, <laughs> right? You could do that with kind of a mixed reality environment. And all of this on the move, thanks to 5G. And Juniper is in a great position, actually, to take advantage of this opportunity, right? Absolutely. We're on the leading edge. Mm -hmm. and, and when we say 5G, you know, one thing is important to understand that 5G is not a standalone technology. It, it goes hand in hand with the move to cloud and AI. Mm -hmm. So at Juniper, you know, we talk about cloud plus 5G plus AI era mm. that is driving the next decade. And all of these three things are needed together to build the networks that you know meet applications like these and that change the business for service providers. A move to cloud is fundamental mm. because the network needs to be re rebuilt in a completely cloud native way mm. that everything is you know disaggregated. 
Uh, there's a mix of centralized and distributed architectures. Um, a lot of hardware and software you know, separation is there that allows you to scale different parts of the network, deliver services from anywhere. So completely fundamentally new architecture thanks to cloud. Mm -hmm. And AI is very important because now you know, we are talking of gigabits of speeds and millions, billions of endpoints. So the amount of traffic is just massive. So the amount of complexity that, that creates, right, AI is the only practical way to be able to manage the operations and run a network like that. So at Juniper, we are driving you know, the move to cloud, 5G, and AI mm -hmm. for our service providers. And you know, we're really excited. We're really, really excited about this opportunity. Now, I know the service providers, the operators, have been kind of struggling. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how would this 5G bring opportunities for them to maybe compete and actually rise again? Great question. Um, you know, for the service providers, they had a very great run in the past few decades, you know, especially once 4G took off, yes. right? It was like a mini supercomputer in people's hands, and, you know, that opened the floodgates mm -hmm. of understanding what's that demand, that hunger for data. Mm -hmm. With 5G, there's no stopping of that hunger for data consumption, but the challenge is that in terms of revenues, you know, even though the traffic and the consumption is going up, the revenues are kind of flattish. So yes, definitely service providers have this challenge and that you know needs to be solved. So from Juniper perspective, we see that this is the biggest challenge of the next decade to help our operators transform their business. So that's not just transforming the networks with cloud, 5G, and AI. That's also transforming the business models that's also transforming the culture, mm. the people, the processes, the ability to take more risks. Business models also, coming back to that, it's, it's very key because uh, today, you know, typically they charge for capacity, like, okay, here's one gigabit of, you know, for $10 right. or whatever. Right. That like pricing. a fixed capacity for a fixed cost. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But in the future, you know, they have to change that business model and make it more and more are aligned with the services and the applications. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, if Jessica is on a particular conferencing call and she wants 100% reliability for that connection, even though whenever she's on the move, not a single packet should be dropped. It was crystal clear. I need right. high throughput. You should be able to make that choice that I'd like to switch to a you know high performance network, right. um, and yes, I'm willing to pay whatever two dollars extra for it for that right? higher SLA for the yeah. higher SLA, right? And the network should be capable of doing that. Yeah. In the past, that was not possible. With 5G, you can actually create a slice out of mm. the whole network, a slice fine tuned just for Jessica's mm. particular session that she's you know, willing to also pay for more. Yes. So this is a kind of a new business model where you're able to create the network, little chunks of the network, mm -hmm. fine, fine tune for services and applications and be able to charge for them. And by doing so, you, know, you're, you can really create far more value. And like we already talked about, you know, hundreds of different types of applications are now possible. So it wouldn't be a good idea to just you know, charge them in the same way uh, that we have uh, that typically uh, being done so far. Fabulous, I like that. I think everybody would appreciate having that control mm -hmm. of paying more for the service you need. Mm -hmm. Kanika, I want to ask your um, thoughts on career advancement, things that you've done at work for you you'd like to share. Sure. Um, I, I wouldn't say these are tips, but I'll say these are two things uh, that I've maybe done differently and they've worked for me, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad to share those. Uh, I think one is to be holistic in your thinking and in your language, and I'll explain that a little bit more. And two is to be authentic, is to be really who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, let me talk about the first one, being holistic. So no matter which function you are in, you could be an engineer, you could be in finance, you could be in marketing, you could be in HR or sales. It is very important to understand the big picture, mm. to know at first your company level, what's going on, what does the business say, what are the numbers happening, you know, take time to read those quarterly results and mm -hmm. reports. Mm -hmm. Then also to understand at a macro level, at an industry level, what are the trends, what's happening and use this knowledge and this understanding in your language when you talk to people 
inside your company or outside your company, you know, you start your conversation with that holistic understanding and, you know, be curious, ask questions related to it. When, when you up-level that conversation from the very micro-level details, I think people begin to see you in a different light and mm. you actually gain a much better understanding of how you contribute to this big picture and what else you could do. Mm. And I think that has helped me in very good stead. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I will say, is you know, be authentic and be who you are, right? Uh, for example, you know, yes, you have to continuously learn and gain knowledge, but that's not enough. I think you should have an opinion as well that is grounded in that knowledge in your, from your interactions, from your experience. Have an original opinion. It's important to have an opinion than not have any. Hmm. You know, what are the chances? Take chances and speak up, right? And speak <laughs> up. You know, you, it may be wrong. It may be right. I don't know. But if you don't speak up, you will never find out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is having that perspective and opinion uh, that I think differentiates people uh, from, you know, everybody else who just follows along and follows the course. They may have great ideas in their head, but they never speak up mm -hmm. because maybe they're afraid. So don't be afraid. You know, be who you are. Life is too short. And when you're authentic, it shows. So be holistic and be authentic. Yes. These are great tips. Thank you very much, Kanika, for being on the show and talk about the 5G. Appreciate you. Pleasure is all mine. And cheers to 5G. I'm really excited to take this forward and make this happen. And hopefully it, it will touch your lives sooner than later. There you have it, Kanika Atri from Juniper Networks. Thank you.